What's the best way to stay healthy in the face of so much conflicting nutrition information? Well, ideally, you would go to the source, the gold standard, the peer-reviewed medical literature, and read through the stacks of the latest medical journals. But who's got time for that? I do! Welcome to the Nutrition Facts Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Greger. If you eat a plant-based diet, you may wonder, do we really need to take supplements like vitamin B12? Let's find out. Um, hello from Jonathan. How do you recommend navigating supplements, multivitamins, protein powders? I'm not sure what to trust, given the lax regulation. Yeah, absolutely. Well, certainly there's this regulation uh, is indeed lax. Um, uh, so what protein powder to get? No protein powder. Why would anyone need protein powder? You get protein the same way you get carbs, same way you get fat from whole foods, ideally whole plant foods. And uh, no reason to take a multivitamin. Um, there are some things that people may need in supplement form. For example, vitamin D, if you're getting inadequate sunshine, vitamin B12, you're not eating vitamin B12 fortified foods. Um, so how do you get supplements that aren't like contaminated with something or actually have what they say they have? Um, probably the best way to do it is to get one that is USP certified. So that's a third-party certification entity that makes sure that whatever says on the label is what is actually in the bottle. doesn't mean it's good for you or anything. I mean, they, you can have USP certification of snake oil, but at least it would be actual snake oil at the dose that they say on the package. So it's kind of truth in advertising. Okay, this is uh, from Heidi, new to plant-based, mostly fruit diet, okay? Do I need to take vitamin B12 supplement? Absolutely. Or eat vitamin B12 fortified foods, one of those two. Um, uh, critically important uh, for anyone eating a plant-centered diet, even if you're not, um, even if it's not strictly plant-based, um, critically important to do. Okay, Gabrielle, or Gabriel. Um, what, what can cause tingling sensation in a whole food plant-based diet besides B12 deficiency? I presume you mean tingling sensation kind of uh, fingers and toes. That's a sign of a peripheral, typically a sign of peripheral neuropathy. Um, why, so if, let's say you have a problem with your nerves, why would it show up as tingling in your fingers and toes? Well, those are the longest nerves in your body. Um, so the, the, the nerve in your toe actually goes all the way up to your spinal cord, from your toe all the way up to the spinal cord. One nerve like one long, skinny, teeny little string of spaghetti, but like almost microscopic, actually microscopic, all the way up. Isn't that amazing? One, you know, you think of cells as being microscopic. This, uh, this cell is like, you know, three feet long. Um, so you can imagine if there's any problems with your nerves, those are the nerves that are going to really show it first, right? Is the ones that are so long and vulnerable. And uh, so you get this kind of... Uh, um, that typical thing, but it can be caused of all sorts of things. There's all sorts of toxins, uh, medications um, uh, that can do it. And so you just really need to go to a neurologist and they go through the differential diagnosis, all the various things that can cause it. Um, there are other nutrition deficiencies that can do it. Um, and you just, uh, some heavy metal toxicities can do it. Um, oh, there's autoimmune diseases, all sorts of things. So you just got to get checked out. We got Mechanicurcatsy. Do you have short-term effects with insufficient B12 levels? Um, uh, uh, so I presume cl clinical effects. Do you actually feel differently um, in the short term from insufficient B12? You may not, which makes it so insidious, but you can start showing these club subclinical um, uh, um, issues in terms of rising homocysteine or something, which you wouldn't really feel, but may have uh, negative consequences. So... Um, so a regular, reliable source of vitamin B12 is critically important. And uh, so for those eating plant-based diets, for example, I would recommend either sufficient vitamin B12 fortified foods or taking one 2,000 microgram um, uh, B12 tablet once a week. Get all the B12 you need. Uh, super cheap, safe, easy, convenient, um, and critically important. Can you synthesize enough vitamin D during the warm months to last you throughout winter? Yes, in terms of enough vitamin D to live. Um, uh, I mean, that's the whole point is that uh, during the uh, summer months, you know, we got high latitudes, you build up enough and it's stored in your fat and you kind of live through the winter and then you get more um, the next year. But do you have enough in your body for optimal health? That we don't know the answer. And we suspect that it's probably, you probably dip too low. And indeed, you see that, uh, you know, the, that study, the Oxford um, uh, study 
on uh, vegans in the UK, high latitude, vitamin D perfect in the summer, it dips um, too low during the winter months. Um, and uh, so uh, it's probably good when you're getting insufficient sunshine to supplement your diet with vitamin D. And I would recommend uh, you know, 2,000 international units of vitamin D3 a day for anyone getting insufficient sun. Doesn't matter where you live, even in the warmer months, if you're inside all day, doesn't matter how much sun there is outside, you're not going to make enough because it actually it, it relies on cutaneous exposure without sunblock, without clothes. What do we have next? This is from Stephanie. I don't know if vitamin D3 is okay for a whole food plant based because I read vitamin D2 is vegan rather than vitamin D3. Okay, there are vegan sources of both vitamin D2, which is sourced predominantly from um, uh, fungi, from mushrooms. Um, and vitamin D3, which is sourced predominantly from sheep's wool, but is also from lichen, which is a, kind of an uh, algae-based multicellular organism, but, uh, but not an animal. Um, uh, so, uh, so, yeah, you can get vegan vitamin D3. Um, you, um, all D2 is vegan, but uh, D3 is probably preferable just because the studies showing increased longevity with vitamin D supplementation, we're all done on vitamin D3. Um, and so since that's what the studies were done on, we don't know if that necessarily translates to uh, D2. So I would just use D3 if you have a choice. And if it's important for you to be vegan, you can get a vegan D3, no problem. We would love it if you could share with us your stories about reinventing your health through evidence-based nutrition. Go to nutritionfacts.org slash testimonials. We may be able to share it on our social media to help inspire others. To see any graphs, charts, graphics, images, or studies mentioned here, please go to the Nutrition Facts podcast landing page. There you'll find all the detailed information you need, plus links to all the sources we cite for each of these topics. For a vital, timely text on the pathogens that cause pandemics, you can order the ebook, audiobook, or hard copy of my latest book, How to Survive a Pandemic. For recipes, check out my new How Not to Diet cookbook. It's beautifully designed with more than 100 recipes for delicious and nutritious meals. And of course, all the proceeds I receive from the sales of all my books go to charity. NutritionFacts.org is a nonprofit science based public service where you can sign up for free daily updates on the latest in nutrition research via bite sized videos and articles. Everything on the website is free. Uh, there's no ads, no corporate sponsorship, no kickbacks. It's strictly non commercial, not selling anything. I just put it up as a public service, as a labor of love, as a tribute to my grandmother, whose own life was saved with evidence based nutrition.